Hi there, Richard from Digital Foundry here taking a look at PC performance on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So you've probably heard by now that the PC version is really well optimised, a far cry from the desperately poor showing of last year's Call of Duty Ghosts. We wondered just what kind of gaming PC is required to match the PlayStation 4 experience at full 1080p. So what you're seeing here is the performance profile of the PC version with settings matched as closely as possible to the PS4 game as we could get them using a Core i3 4130 dual core CPU and a GTX 750 Ti graphics card. Two parts would class as entry level enthusiast components for gaming. We started at max settings and then pulled back various presets until they were a match for the PS4 version. So anti-aliasing was pulled back to FXAA. We selected anisotropic filtering down to its lowest level, then adjusted shadows, depth of field and motion blur to the medium settings. Screenshot comparisons we did suggested that those were the best fit. Where we couldn't get a match, for example on the number of dynamic lights in play, we left those at maximum. The results demonstrate that while PS4 has an advantage during cutscenes, our PC maintains 60 frames per second better than the console during gameplay. But we didn't stop there. There are a couple of areas where we felt image quality isn't up to scratch, and we felt that the GTX 750 Ti had more to offer. So we ramped up texture filtering to maximum and adjusted anti-aliasing to the SMAA T2X preset. The results here are interesting, there's a bigger hit to performance mostly during cutscenes, but gameplay seems a touch smoother than PS4. This changes when there's a battery of post-processing effects on screen where performance can suffer, but this is fairly rare. Overall we'd take those infrequent hits to frame rate in order to enjoy better image quality for the whole duration. But PC owners get a further chance to tweak their setups. While the Core i3 CPU we're using can't be overclocked, the GTX 750 Ti can and it's one of the few cards where increasing memory and GPU clock speeds doesn't seem to impact temperatures or power draw, meaning there's very little chance that system reliability or longevity will be affected once you've finalised a stable OC. We added 135MHz to the core clock and 600MHz to the RAM. Based on our tests on the first level of the campaign, this offers the best of both worlds, better image quality than console and higher frame rates. But the question is, does this overclock sustain a higher level of performance throughout the campaign? Well the truth is that consoles have a secret weapon that PCs simply don't have, the ability for developers to optimise to a fixed platform. While our initial campaign tests show a clear lead for our budget orientated PC, later levels show the two systems trading blows. Moving up to the next tier of GPU hardware, something like the GTX 660 for example, would probably address this fairly comprehensively. Anyway, regardless, Advanced Warfare is pretty sweet on PC. An entry level enthusiast rig matches PS4 pretty closely, but you'll have no problem at all with more consistent frame rates and higher quality settings on a more mainstream gaming PC. Couple an i5 with something like a GTX 760 or better, and you'll have an even better experience. Anyway, we'll leave you with more analysis, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Seeing this? All right. We have actionable intel that the KVA are trying to trigger a meltdown in the reactor building. We're inserting in the south courtyard and we'll push north. This shit ends in the control room. Get in position. Disengaging stealth. Sam 
launch at our 12 o'clock, over. Contact, contact! Deploying four combat! Range 2-3, we're hit! We're 2-4 is down, 2-4 is down! 2-5, break position and provide support for Alpha, over. Copy that, 2-3. We've got hostiles in our LZ, copy. Roger, Bravo, clear out those rooftops. Mitchell, hit those tangos on the roof. 